Hey gang, thanks for showing up to the webinar today. I'm very excited to have you. I've got something I'm going to share with you that I promise will blow your mind. And what it is, it's a it's pretty much a bank secret. It's a simple little known trick to pay your home off in five to seven years on your same level of income and then start building wealth. So in the next few moments, here's what we're going to cover. You're going to learn that there's a far better way to becoming financially free using a tool that tons of banks and lenders have against them. And this is no gimmick. I promise you that. It's not a get-rich-quick scheme or anything of that nature. It's just a simple mass solution that's proven to decimate your mortgage balance and have you debt-free fast, very fast. Again, by five to seven years on the same level of income that you're earning right now. And when I say proven, I mean millions of folks are enjoying this strategy to not only pay off debt, but also build wealth. And it's legal. It's not a scam. Again, it's a bank product that they've had around for decades. And in fact, one in four homeowners in Australia and the United Kingdom are paying their homes off in less time than it takes some folks to pay off their car. You see, the strategy is actually something that's very popular overseas. Uh, the strategy first came about back in 1997 from a bank in Australia that brought the strategy over as a way to show folks how to pay off their mortgage extremely fast. And now it's just become extremely popular over there, but not over here. And I'll get to the reason why it has not become as popular here in the States as it has overseas. Okay, so now let's talk about why you're here. Uh, most folks are here because of some level of stress, whether it be financial stress or things that have led to a different type of stress, but the root of it was financial. So have you ever wondered what life would be like debt free and to live a life not bound by financial burdens? Are you tired of surviving and not thriving, but feel you need to catch a big break to fulfill your lifelong dreams? Then I promise, this technique will eliminate your stress and you'll begin to take control of your life. You're here for a reason, and I promise I'm going to show you the solution. So who is this for? This is for homeowners or those that want to be homeowners, but do not want your debts to dictate your flexibility. So ideally, you're going to need about 10% equity or down payment. But keep in mind, I have actually found a handful of banks that will offer this product with zero equity, meaning you get 100% financing whether that's to refinance or to purchase your home with no money down. You're also going to need some sufficient credit and discipline. So when I say sufficient credit, I don't mean perfect credit, but at least a 640 credit score. Um, there is no uh, typical minimum credit score for this product, uh, but what I have found is around 640 and above, those clients tend to get approved much quicker than the ones below that. And are you cash flow positive? And what this simply means is, do you make more money than you have expenses? The more cash flow positive you are, the better the strategy is going to pay off for you. However, as long as you're cash flow positive, meaning you make more and you bring home more money than you're actually spending, then this is for you. And typically, that's any type of traditional mortgage products, whether it be conventional or FHA, VA, USDA, all of those products that you typically qualify for, you have to have some type of residual income or be cash flow positive or else you wouldn't qualify for those. So if you qualify for those products, you're gonna qualify for this one. Okay, so now, now talk about how this is different. See what this is, this is not a HARP loan. It's not a streamlined refinance, nor any other type of traditional mortgage product, but it is using a product that banks have had for decades. And what it is, is just a simple home equity line of credit, and a very specific one. But, it is, again, it's not what you would call an Obama loan or HARP loan, streamline refinance. It is literally a home equity line of credit. Now, the simple cash flow strategy not taught by banks, bankers, or loan officers. And why? Because they will lose money. And, in fact, they're going to lose your money. Here's a, a great quote that I love from Henry Ford. If people understood the banking system, there would be a revolution before morning. So let's talk about myself. Who is Michael Lush? Well, in all honesty, I am a banker and have been for quite some time, uh, for 13 years now. In fact, I'm a senior vice president of one of the fastest growing banks in the United States. And you can research me at the website shown here, and that's the nmlsconsumeraccess.org. And my NMLS number is 168206. And you'll notice that I've had various positions all the way from loan officer to senior manager uh, to director of operations and now senior vice president. So I've gone through the ranks because I've been able to close thousands of mortgage transactions and I've always been putting my customers in a better financial situation. But here's the problem. I recently learned it wasn't the best situation. So why am I letting the cat out of the bag? 
Well, I actually have a moral compass, and my life focuses on four main principles. Faith, family, finances, and ultimately freedom. Morally, I can't keep this a secret, and I must right the wrong one family at a time. And I've been blessed, and now I want to bless. I want to transform lives. Knowledge truly is power. And I can't take credit for this or this strategy and did not develop this strategy. In fact, as I've mentioned before, it's been around since 1997 in other countries. And I've been implementing this strategy for myself and my family for 18 months and my mortgage balance is plummeting. And when I say plummeting, I mean fast. I'll be debt free in 2.4 years without making any more money. I'm not cashing in our retirement. I'm not cashing in the kids college fund. And I'm not actually sacrificing our lifestyle. We're not having to eat rice or beans or to... Uh, really monitor our budget. Actually, we're just budgeting the exact same as we were before. And if it sounds too good to be true, I, I'm sorry. It's just not. It's a simple math and cash flow adjustment. It's not a get rich quick scheme. So if you're asking yourself that, you know, it, it's not. In fact, this is something that actually will take you years, depending on your income and discipline. But when I say years, it's not going to take 30. It's not going to take 10. It's not going to take 15. But it will take decades sooner to get there than your traditional mortgage product. And if you do nothing, then that's exactly what you can expect. Nothing. So we've all been deceived. And what you're looking at here is a traditional mortgage, a conventional mortgage for that matter. And this is an amortization schedule. So it's probably, it looks very familiar to what you saw when you filled out your mortgage application or closed on your mortgage transaction. And as you can see over here to the right, principal is not really going down that much. I mean, if you notice, on a monthly basis, you're really only adding about $120 to $121 of principal. So who's really winning? If you want to know who's really winning in this situation, is it the consumer or the bank? Well, all you got to do is follow the money. So take a look at this. This is a $250,000 loan. And on a 30-year mortgage, at the end of 30 years, you have paid $456,016.78 almost double what your home is worth. Now, appreciation in some areas of this country is really good, but it will take a long time before a $250,000 home is actually worth $450,000. In fact, it may never happen. So long story short is you're going to pay more for your house than what it's actually worth. Not to mention mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance comes about when you're not putting down more than 20% or, 20 or more uh, down payment. And what the banks do is require you to have mortgage insurance, and it really only protects them in case you default on your mortgage. But even if you notice on a 15-year mortgage, at $250,000, your total paid is $344,246.98. So you're almost paying $100,000 in interest payments back to the bank. So basically, you don't own your home. You're just renting it from a different landlord, and that landlord is the bank. So if that didn't make you sick enough to your stomach, uh, there's something else about doing a traditional mortgage loan that's different than doing a home equity line of credit, and that's the closing costs. See, if you're looking at this graph right here, you're looking at the average mortgage closing cost by state. The average for the U.S. is $2,527. Now, that's the average. That's for folks with good credit, uh, quite a bit of money down. So it could be quite a bit more than that. Um, so when you're talking about closing costs or mortgage closing costs, you're talking underwriting fees, processing fees, application fees, credit report fees, origination points, discount points, blah, blah, blah. So the mortgage company is going to make money one of two ways. Either they're going to make it on the interest rate side by charging you a higher interest rate, or they're going to make it on the closing cost side, charging you a lot of closing costs. Either way, they're going to make their money. So don't be... Uh, confused with those programs that you may have been offered with no closing cost loan. Yeah, but you're paying a much higher uh, interest rate than you would have to or that you would qualify for because you're getting no closing costs. Make no mistake about it, the bank is making their money one of two ways. And not to beat a dead horse, but did I mention mortgage insurance again? You see, mortgage insurance is something that's required when you have 20% uh, less in equity or in down payment. So let's say you're refinancing and the loan amount is 85% of the value of your home. Whether you're going to have some type of more, uh, mortgage insurance or if you're put, uh, buying a home and you have less than 20% to put down, you're going to have mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance does not protect the consumer. It literally is wasted money. And just to give you an example, FHA has a 1.75% upfront mortgage fee. 
So that's 1.75% of your loan amount is getting charged on top of the loan. In addition to that, they're charging 85 basis points on monthly mortgage insurance. So you're not only paying it up front, you're also paying monthly. And again, does not protect you as the consumer. The VA is actually one of the better traditional mortgage products out there, but they charge uh, what's called a funding fee. They they don't call it mortgage insurance, but what it's actually is, is called as a funding fee. So it's anywhere from 0% to 3.3%. 0% is if you're a disabled vet, uh, but it can be as much as 3.3% of the loan amount that you're taking out. On top of that, is that's what's getting financed onto it. So, you know, let's say you're financing a $100,000 loan you're really going to be financing a $103,300 loan because of their upfront funding fee. USDA. USDA is a, another program out there that's 100% financing, uh, but you are limited to specific areas. Not every area is USDA eligible. Uh, for the most part, you got to be in a rural area. But they charge 2% upfront, and they also charge 50 basis points on a monthly basis. Uh, as far as monthly mortgage insurance. But again, they don't call it mortgage insurance. They actually call it a guarantee fee. So different terminology, but really it's the same. It protects them. It doesn't protect you. Conventional. Conventional is anywhere from 27 basis points to 1.48% on a monthly basis. Conventional products don't charge uh, upfront mortgage insurance, but they do charge monthly mortgage insurance. Now, again, this is another category where a lender or a bank may say, well, put 5% down and there's no monthly mortgage insurance. And what they're actually doing is paying that monthly mortgage insurance premium on your behalf, but where they're getting the money is by giving you an interest rate much higher than what you qualify for. Again, they're still getting their money one way or the other. So again, what's the benefit to you as the consumer? Absolutely nothing. Zero percent. So obviously, when you can, you do not want to pay mortgage insurance. So if there's a better way, then why hasn't my bank told me about this? Well, the number one most common reason is they don't want you to know. The more interest and closing costs you pay, the more they profit. So for just to use an example, refer to your mortgage statement. We've already gone over that earlier in this conversation, but you can see how much they're profiting by you having a, tr a traditional mortgage product. Not to mention, a home equity line of credit does not pay very well. You're, on average, you're looking at a compensation to a bank or a loan officer of 250 bucks to $750 for a home equity line of credit. But on a traditional mortgage, they're getting 1% to 3% compensation based on the loan amount. That's a significant difference. So they're not even motivated to tell you what's best for you. Number two, even the most, most of the bankers don't know. They're institutionalized, just like I was, and thought that giving you a low rate, low term traditional mortgage was the best way to, to save you money and get you debt free. So when I was seeking this out for me and my family, I spoke to no less than nine bankers and loan officers. And do you know how many actually understood the strategy? Zero. And the reason why I took the uh, talk to nine is I was actually shopping around for the bank or credit union that offered the best terms for what I wanted for me and my family. But zero understood the strategy. So my point is, if they don't know, how can they tell you? Okay, so let's get to the sexy part, the solution. How do we correct this problem? Now that we know that we have a problem or that there is a problem, how do we correct it and what is the solution? Well, first, you're going to finance your new home or replace your existing mortgage using a home equity line of credit. And you'll need a specific one, and I'll guide you in getting the proper one. Secondly, you're going to change where your cash goes. So stop giving the bank your money at 0.17%, which is the national average as far as what you're getting in interest on the money in your checking and savings account. So stop giving them that money so they can turn around and lend it back to you at 4 and 5%. So instead, you're going to dump all of your income into a home equity line of credit. So don't freak out. Don't worry. I, understand, I know what you're thinking right now. Money can go in and out freely. So although all of your money is going into the home equity line of credit, you'll be able to get money back out of it to pay bills anytime you need. And then what you're going to do is pay your bills out of the home equity line of credit, no different than you would your check and savings account. And the remainder goes towards the balance, thus reducing the interest you pay on a monthly basis. In a nutshell, you're going to forget that you have a check and savings account. Just treat your home equity line of credit like it's your check and savings account and you'll watch magic happen. Okay, so let's look at an example. Here's an example of someone making $7,000 a month in income. Now again, a $7,000 a month in income 
is household income. So it could be husband and wife, or let's just say, you know, the wife makes that or the husband makes it. it doesn't matter. Seven thousand dollars a month in income, and it's net income. So this is actually what can hit your bank account. And we're also looking at a three hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage at an annual interest rate of four and a quarter percent, which is a decent rate nowadays. You can get in the threes on the traditional mortgage products, but four and a quarter, just an average. So I just plug that in just to kind of give you an idea. And we're looking at a 30 year term here. So if you have a household income of $7,000 and you take your tax refund, if you get one, uh, let's, and I just put in 3000 bucks here, but if you take a $3,000 tax refund, and again, all income goes towards your home equity line of credit, dump it in there. Look at this. This is the number of payments you'll make to pay off your home. You'll only pay $34,000 in interest. Here's another example. Let's use something well way more conservative. Let's say you're at $3,500 a month in income on a $250,000 mortgage, which by the way, if you've got $3,500 a month in income, you shouldn't be on a $250,000 mortgage, but if you are, there is a solution. So again, $250,000, four and a quarter, 30 year term, $3,500 a month. Let's say you're also getting $3,000 a year in a tax refund. Dump that into your home equity line of credit as well. You'll have it paid off in 77 months, which is 6.42 years. You're actually going to save yourself $157,000 in interest payments. Here's another example. $4,500 of income. But let's say life happens because it always does. You know, we can't live in fantasy land and expect that you're not going to have any large expenses over the course of the year. So let's say you buy a new car every year. So $250,000 at a $4,500 household income. And let's say you get a new car, $15,000 every year. Why you would do that? I have no clue. But let's just say every year you get a $15,000 car. Again, your tax refund is going towards it. Look where you're at, 80 payments. 6.67 years is how long it will take to pay off all of your cars and your mortgage, and you'll save $156,629 in interest payments. But do yourself a favor. Do not buy a car every year. The strategy is meant to teach you how to get out of debt and not buy liabilities. So if those examples weren't exciting enough, I've got more good news. A home equity line of credit HELOC for short, does not have mortgage closing costs. So you're already saving at least $2,525 in closing costs immediately because a home equity line of credit, again, does not have closing costs. Now, it doesn't have mortgage closing costs. It does have title costs, no different than a traditional mortgage. So you still got re title recording fees and maybe title insurance, but you don't have the lender fees, which again, on average is $2,525. And it also does not have mortgage insurance ever. So it doesn't matter if you're taking out 90% of the value of your home or 100% of the value of your home, there's no mortgage insurance. And some banks offer 100% financing, which means you can buy a home with no down payment, no closing costs, and no mortgage insurance and pay it off in five to seven years on the same level of income. So let's look at a 10-year term. Some, some folks will say, well, why wouldn't I just do a 10-year term? Well, take a look at this. This is, again, a 10-year mortgage, and this is what a 10-year mortgage payment would be, $2,560 on a $250,000 loan at $425,000. But you put it in the home equity line of credit calculator here, and you notice that just paying that same payment pays it off in nine years. So just making that payment, you're still paying it off a year faster than you would on a 10-year mortgage. So it takes longer. And there's also no flexibility. So if you look at a 10-year mortgage, you're putting your money into it. Well, let's say life happens and you need to pay your bills now. But guess what? That money's there. It's with the lenders, with the bank. You're not getting it back unless you refinance or sell. With a home equity line of credit, if an emergency happens, you have access to it. Try to do that as little as possible. But again, you don't have to go refinance or sell your house just to get access to your equity. And the problem with a 10-year mortgage is still a traditional mortgage. So it still has closing costs, mortgage insurance, etc. Now, earlier on, I said I, I would also show you how this is going to build wealth. Well, this is how it happens. You're going to duplicate this strategy over and over again, building a real estate empire. You could own two homes free and clear in half the time your neighbors pay off their first home. Imagine how much money you could invest if you didn't have a mortgage payment. You could leverage your equity for investments with double the rate of return while minimizing the tax burdens. So let's take a look at these. So let's say you wanted to buy a vacation home. 
you can buy a vacation home anywhere using a home equity line of credit. And when I say anywhere, it doesn't have to be in the United States because all you're doing is essentially paying cash for that vacation home. So let's say you pay off your home, you know, let's say it's 350000 now you got a zero balance, and you want to go buy a $200,000 beach villa in the Bahamas or Jamaica. Well, obviously, you don't want to borrow money from the Bohemians or the Jamaicans. Interest rates are through the roof. So you pay cash. You just pull it out of your home equity line of credit, and you hand cash over. There's no approval process. You just bought your vacation home. And furthermore, you can rent it out when you're not there. The rental income allows you to pay the home off faster. Again, because all the income that you're making goes towards your home equity line of credit. So one of my favorite uh, vacation spots is Destin, Florida. And we're looking at buying a vacation spot there. We go there two or three times a year and thought, well, if we're going to go so often, why don't we just buy a place down here? So I got to talking around with some of the other management uh, property owners there and they rent their property out year round. So anywhere from 40 to 52 weeks a year, their property is rented out. So when you're not there and you're not staying there, allow your rental income to further pay off the home equity line of credit so you would actually be able to pay off your vacation home much faster than you did your primary residence. Now you're getting paid to vacation in your home. So let's take a look at buying investment properties. And investment properties are condos, uh, anything where you're able to get rental income from, so houses, uh, etc. Let's say for three properties on average $115,000. So $115,000 per property is $345,000 alone. And you can rent those properties out at $4,500 total because they're $1,500 a month in rent. You know, again, depending on your market, but I'm just giving an example. What you've just done is create a residual $4,500 a month of income in three years because as you notice, if you've got a household income of 5,000 bucks, and you go and buy three properties for 345,000 total, and then you've got rental income of 4,500. Again, you'll have a much larger tax fund now that you've got rental properties. However, let's just say again, it's 3,000 just to be conservative. You'll pay all three homes off in 3.17 years. So 38 months, all three properties are paid off free and clear, which means in three years, you just created a cash cow making yourself $4,500 a month in income. And here's one of my favorites, flips, buying flips. I love those shows, you know, Fixer Upper and, you know, Flip This House and so on. So this is one of my favorites. And in my market, it's very easy to buy a foreclosure, short sale, uh, or any house at an auction for twenty five, thirty five thousand. Again, every market's going to be a little bit different, but in this market, it's pretty easy to get a house for twenty five or thirty five thousand. The problem is, is that real estate auctions, cash is king. So if you're there and you're requiring financing, you're going to have an issue. Well, the thing is, is with a home equity line of credit, you are cash. I mean, if you have that equity in your home equity line of credit. All it is is just a swipe of your debit card. The bank is actually going to give you a debit card tied to your home equity line of credit. And with a swipe of it, you can spend as much money as you want. And again, on assets, not liabilities. So at a real estate auction, you're just as good as those cash buyers. So let's take an example. Let's say you buy a home for $35,000 and then you invest $15,000 in repairs. And again, 15000 has a bit inflated, but let's just say you're not doing the work and you're hiring other people to do the work. So 35000 and 15000 in repairs, you sell it for $100,000, you are at a $50,000 profit. Well, if you do this four times a year, you're at $200,000 a year. And the one thing that I've learned is that millionaires have a different mindset than those that are not millionaires. They don't just have one stream of income. They have many. And in fact, on average, they have seven streams of income. And this is a really cool way for you to create a lot of streams of income for you and your family. So let's talk about investing. Here's another option that you can do with the home equity line of credit. Let's say you've paid your home off. Well, your home appreciates at 2 to 4% each year. The home does, but the cash that represents your equity is sitting in there dormant at 0%. So don't make a mistake and think that just because your home is going up in value that your cash is appreciating. That's not true. The cash is sitting in there at 0%, but the home is appreciating. So why leave all that cash in there at 0%? 
it would be pretty easy to double your money in 10 years in this market. So let's say, you've, again, 350000 It's just one of my favorite numbers. 350000 you take that money out, put it in the market, in nine years, it becomes 700000 So now you're earning $4,666 of interest income per month based on an interest rate of 8%. So get familiar with this. Number one, you have to have a success mindset. You have to think differently. And this isn't all that different compared to what other folks in other countries are doing. It's just different for America. So we have to get in that similar mindset. They actually think that the way that we do mortgages is very archaic because it takes us way too long to pay off a home. And in fact, how many consumers refinance every three to five years? And when they refinance, what are they doing? They're going backwards to a 30-year term. Well, although that's saving them money on a monthly basis, it's costing them tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over the life of that loan. So we have to have the proper mindset. Two is knowledge. Well, that's what I'm bringing to you today. I'm showing you that there's a different way, a mathematical way to get debt free much quicker that the banks don't want you to know about. Three, you've got to put that plan in place. You have to have some type of risk management. So what I mean by that is some of these ideas I'm presenting requires you to have a great real estate agent, requires you to have a good accountant, requires you to have a good financial planner that before you didn't think you could afford. Well, now you're getting wealthy, so you need those folks. Then you're going to use that to create additional sources of cash flow, and you're going to use your equity to build wealth. So let's get started. What you've just seen is just a snippet of the seven-part course I have designed to walk you step-by-step -step through this process. You'll be my client until you reach my goals. So you're not my client until we reach a transaction. You are my client until you reach whatever goals we've put in place for you or you've put in place for yourself. And I'll show you where to get the right product and how to structure it and how to implement it, which is extremely important. Well, here's your alternative. Your alternative is to maintain the status quo, giving hundreds of thousands of dollars away to your bank. You don't want to do that. And here's a, a diagram of wealth in this country. The top 1%. Back in 1962, the top 1% on average was worth $6 million. In 2009, that number climbed to $14 million. Well, let's go all the way down here towards the end. Low is fifth. In 1962... The average household was worth a negative 7,000. Well, that number has also gone up, but in the wrong direction, in 2009 to 27,000. And why do you think that's so different between the top 1% and the lowest fifth? It's not work ethic. It's mindset. The rich get richer and the poor get poor by design. You determine which one you're going to be. So your transformation is literally my passion. That's what I'm doing this for. I'm not doing it for the money. I'm doing it because this needs to get out there. This is actually a passion of mine. And normally I charge $4,995 to walk you through the next few years of financial freedom. And others charge twice this amount. And I'm not saying that it's not worth it. It definitely is. But I want to make this affordable for everyone. So I priced it much lower than what your bank will charge you for a crappy traditional mortgage. Speaking of which, do you know the name of your bank or a loan officer? Because my clients, they know my kids' names and my cell phone number. So here's a no-brainer alert. I'm discounting the price 60% to $1,997. And since this product has no closing costs, you'll make 127% return on your investment immediately since a traditional mortgage will cost you at least $2,525. So in other words, if you're contemplating refinancing or buying a home, go this route and you'll instantly save 127% over the traditional mortgage just in closing costs. Not to mention, you'll pay it off a lot quicker. As you can imagine, this has become very popular and I can only service so many clients without sacrificing my faith and my family. Now, before you get this, let me tell you exactly what it does so you know whether or not it's right for you. You know, you're obviously really serious about improving your finances, and I just want to take some time to acknowledge you for that. Most people never take the time to educate themselves the way that you just have. So you're perfect for this. You're watching this, and you really have the commitment and determination to do this now. 
That's why you're perfect for this. It's specifically for people like you who want to improve your finances and decrease stress. Just imagine being debt free and having the luxury of building a legacy for your family. I love this quote. Life is like a piano. What you get out of it depends on how you play it. And it's so true. Let's go back to this being math. It is math. I've shown you several mathematical scenarios and examples of how this works and how it pays off your home so fast. Again, you're using compounding interest to your favor, just like a credit card. If you pay off a credit card or pay down a credit card, what happens to the minimum payment? It goes down. But if you keep applying the same amount of money towards it each month, your principal goes down, your payment goes down. Therefore, that much more money is going towards the principal. It's called debt snowball. So you're actually using compounding interest to your favor. So here's the fact. You know now that a traditional mortgage is a slow, painful way to pay off your debts. And you also know that it's a cash. this is a cash flow strategy. It's a simple mass solution to rapidly pay off your debts and then build wealth. And you also now understand the importance of time and money. The best time to start saving money and invest is now. So let's talk about time because time is very much a commodity. In fact, time is the world's most valuable commodity. Rich people buy it and poor people sell it. And what I mean by this is whether you get paid by a salary or an hourly wage, you're actually selling your time. You know, let's say it's a monthly salary. What you're doing is you're selling how much you're willing to pay on a monthly basis for them to pay you a certain amount. Or if it's an hourly wage, you're trading hours for dollars. What rich people do is they buy time. They leverage their wealth to buy time and poor people sell it and make no mistake this strategy is buying time time is you're paying your home off 20 23 25 years faster than you normally would and what you do with that money is now you can go buy assets that are going to go work for you so are you trading hours for dollars or is your money working for you either way time is running out and you can never get it back once it's already been spent I don't want you to do that. There are 168 hours in a week. At least 40 of those are spent working. Some folks work 60, 70, 80 hours. I've heard horror stories of 100 hours. I don't know how it happens, but it happens. So let's just say 40 hours of those are spent working. Well, that now leaves you with 128 hours. The average person sleeps 8 hours per day or 56 hours per week, and that leaves 72 hours. Speaking of sleep, let's look at this graph. You'll notice that the ages 15 to 19 sleep on average of nine and a half hours. And you notice that the chart goes down and then starts going back up at 65 plus years. Well, one thing that I know that's true between this group and this group, what do they have in common? This group primarily doesn't work. This group primarily doesn't work. So when you don't have to work, I promise you'll sleep much better, it's proven. The average commute to work is 26 minutes each way, or 4.33 hours per week. Now that leaves you 66.67 hours left over. So before I go any further, you're, you're basically getting the drift. More than 60% of your life is spent doing something that you don't want to do. Here's something else I want you to contemplate. It's a, just a, an example of a different mindset and mentality of successful people versus unsuccessful people. So you're probably asking yourself right now, what if I got to lose? That's the wrong question. You should be asking yourself, what do you have to gain? That's what successful people ask themselves. What am I gaining by doing this versus what am I losing? So obviously, would you trade $1,997 to save a literal fortune? I mean, I showed you some examples of $150,000, $250,000, and $350,000 mortgage. You're saving tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So obviously you would trade $1,997 to save a little fortune. Even if you're not looking to refinance or buy, this may prompt you to one, definitely refinance. If you have a mortgage, especially a traditional mortgage, you need to refinance. This is a no brainer. Just refinance, get on a home equity line of credit, give me a call, take down my strategy. I'll send it over to you and I'll show you how to pay that thing off very fast. If you're not buying, why not? Real estate is a great investment. Buy a home, especially over rent. In our market, rent is 35% more expensive per square foot than owning. So you might as well buy. 
But let's be honest with each other. You wouldn't be here if you weren't looking for a better way. The benefits of this strategy means you have nothing to lose. Again, it's math, not magic. You can only put the decimal spot in one spot, and this is proven to decimate your mortgage. So take control now. This strategy gives everyone the opportunity to live the life that you want. And it's not really that hard. It's just a little discipline and patience. So make sure that you understand that you do have to have a little bit of equity. Again, there's a handful of banks out there that you don't have to have any equity. But typically, you want to have 10% equity, decent credit, and discipline. That's what it takes because here's the problem that some folks will face. You will have $100,000 of equity, what will seem like almost overnight. And then you'll find that really nice car that you've always wanted but never could drive. And then guess what? You swipe the card and it's all yours, paid for in cash well, with your home equity line of credit. And now you start all over. That's You're not the right fit if that's what you would have a tendency to do. And you're not alone. I'm going to walk you step by step through these decisions. So pick up this course now and let's schedule a strategy session. Uh-huh.